This is the strongest woman in the world until she was defeated by two emo kids. But before that, Big Mom ruled over Tato Land along with her 86 children, bolstering a mighty armada with tens of thousands of troops. To begin, Charlotte Linlin, aka Big Mom, is the captain of the Big Mom Pirates. With her ginormous crew and monstrous strength that rivals Kaido, Big Mom rose to be one of the four emperors of the sea. The crew resides in Tato Land, and while she is a dictatorial ruler, Big Mom only wants the best for her people. But to get into why Big Mom is this way, we have to go back 63 years to the New World. Charlotte Linlin was born to two regular parents. However, she was abnormally large and powerful. Along with these abnormalities, she harbored an insatiable hunger for anything really, but mostly sweets. And this hunger isn't just, oh, my stomach hurt. No, not even on the level of a food addiction. See, other emperors like Kaido and Whitebeard came from tough backgrounds that made them the strongest people in the world. Big Mom, however, is a seemingly unnatural force whose hunger can never be satisfied. No matter how much she eats, she is never full, and if she doesn't get what she wants, well, basically just imagine a five-year-old with Superman powers. Doesn't matter the situation, location, or people involved, when Big Mom has a hunger tantrum, she is unstoppable. It could be her own children attempting to reason with her, but no, not even that is enough. In fact, Big Mom is going to destroy her entire country just for one cake. And while that is skipping ahead a bit, that basically explains why she was abandoned in the first place. Linlin's parents saw how dangerous she was to their kingdom, so they left her in the safest hands possible. And the only race that has even a chance of harboring her are the giants. Kind of. See, actually, about 40 years before this, a nun named Mother Carmel decided to open up an orphanage for lost children. She created this on Elbaf to strengthen relations between humans and giants. As for Linlin, she felt at home here since the village was built to her size. Even then, Big Mom was still a monster. Again, imagine a five-year-old learning how the world works with Superman powers. It's actually more terrifying than you think. However, Mother Carmel forgave every mistake that Lin Lin made. There was no negative reinforcement, and that's why Big Mom thinks that everything that she does is for good. Nobody punished her for one-shotting a bear. Nobody punished her for ripping someone's arms off because they look different. And this all came to a head in the 12-day fast. Everyone on Elbaf participates in this ceremony before the winter solstice. And we already know where this is going. Lin Lin barely made it to day 7, and on that day, she tore shit up. The destruction was so bad, in fact, that one of the most prestige and respected giants called her a god of disaster and attempted to kill her. But then she proceeded to shatter his sword, grab him by the beard, and slam! <laughs> Nevertheless, Mother Carmel still forgave her. Now, if you're asking how... I'll get into that in a second. As for the giants, however, they will never forgive Big Mom for this incident. Even after 60 years, it's still on site. So of course, Big Mom left Elbaf. Mother Carmel and all the other children left as well, and they started a new orphanage. Again, if you're wondering why they would keep this demon around, well, it's simply because of her potential. In reality, Mother Carmel is a human trafficker who sends orphans to the world government. The whole human and giant relations, safe haven for lost children, all a lie. Lin Lin was Carmel's last big score before she went out of the business, which is why she tolerated this monster for so long. It's important to mention that Big Mom never found out what Carmel's true intentions were, and she holds her in high praises to this day. Not only that, but around this time, Carmel gave Big Mom a dream. The goal to make a land where everyone was equal and they could all see eye to eye, no matter what race, beliefs, or background. Now there is a good reason as to why Carmel and all the other children are not around anymore. See, on Lin Lin's sixth birthday, they all gathered around to eat Semla, the food that Big Mom went crazy over on Elbaf. Basically, the exact same thing happened here. Big Mom went crazy over her cake, with tears rolling down her eyes and all of her friends around her. It was truly the best birthday that she could ever have. However, when all the Semla was out and her eyes cleared, 
everyone was gone. Because of the tears, Lin Lin couldn't tell where everyone went, and the audience isn't shown either. But then, you see everyone's clothes ripped up, all of her friends were holding Semla, the anime has their hearts going towards the sky. Yeah, Big Mom ate everyone in the orphanage. Now there were witnesses to this tragedy. One was a giant who was sent to check on the island and, you know, he shit his pants. And the other was a failed chef named Stroysen. In contrast, he tried to take advantage of Lin Lin by using her as an ally. Stroysen ate the cook cook fruit, which allows him to turn objects into food. A perfect ability to match Big Mom, and that's exactly what happened. The Big Mom pirates were formed. Also, due to Big Mom eating caramel, she gained her devil fruit powers. Caramel ate the soul soul fruit allowing her to manipulate and interact with souls. It also allows a person to give life to objects by using one's soul or others. Now, Stroysen manipulated Big Mom into that means to an end bullshit, you know, where she causes all this death and chaos, all in the name of peace, which landed her with a 50 million berry bounty as a kid. This later turned into 500 million and over 4 billion due to Big Mom honing her unnatural power into skill. This allowed her to join the Rocks Pirates in a brief stint in which she was actually skinny. Big Mom met quite a few familiar faces here as well, such as Kaido and Whitebeard. But of course, the Rocks Pirates had L teamwork and they were defeated at God Valley. Throughout her time as a pirate, Lin Lin not only built up her empire, but also her family, as she would go on to have 86 children while casting aside all of her husbands. And it's not like they would have any say in that anyway, because of how powerful Big Mom was. Possessing durability that rivals Kaido and all three types of hockey. Eventually, the name Charlotte Lin Lin was feared all over the One Piece world, and she became one of the four emperors. However, it wasn't just Big Mom, as she created one of the largest fighting forces in One Piece history. The Big Mom pirates are a combination of a bunch of different forces, but I'll just start with the top executives since that's mostly just the Charlotte family itself. The three sweet commanders are the highest ranking members under the captain. They include Charlotte Smoothie, the 35th sibling and minister of juice, Cracker, the 15th sibling and minister of biscuits, and Katakuri, the third child of Big Mom and the Minister of Flower. All three of these characters are insanely powerful, with Katakuri in particular having the most advanced version of observation hockey, Future Sight. Under the Sweet Commanders are the Officers, where most of the Charlotte siblings reside. And while I'm not gonna name all 70 of them, here are some highlights. Sparrow Sparrow is Big Mom's first child. Oven and Daifuku are near the Sweet Commanders in power. Amande has the best design out of all the crew members. And Pudding is the baddest of the Charlotte siblings. Although, Galette might have her beat for that. I don't know. It depends how I'm feeling. Why, yes, I am a simp. Now there are other high ranking members, such as the combatants. These guys are trustworthy members of the crew that aren't related to Big Mom, who are sent on missions outside of Tato Land. It's also important to mention that many of the officers and combatants have their own underlings that bolster the size of the crew. So the second main faction of the crew are the homies. I mentioned Big Mom's soul powers earlier in the video, how she can give life to objects and all that stuff. That's basically what this is. The homies are objects or beings without sentience that are given life from other souls. The stronger the individual, the more powerful the homie will be. For instance, the three main homies are Zeus, Prometheus, and Napoleon. They come straight from Big Mom's soul. Zeus is a thundercloud that can create great storms in an instant. Prometheus is a ball of fire that can create giant flames. And Napoleon is a sword that can clash with emperors. There's also Hera, who was a replacement for Zeus, but she gets folded like two minutes later. Beyond that, there are entire forests that are made out of homies, different objects, and even Big Mom's ship itself. My personal favorite of these is Randolph, a talking rabbit, simply for this one shot in the anime. Both the officers and the homies work in tandem with the third and largest piece of the crew, the actual military force. 
The lowest ranking members or the grunts of the Big Mom Pirates are not only the chess peacekeepers, but regular people as well. The peacekeepers are low level homies that act as the police force for Tottoland. As for the regular people, they consist of all types of different races, such as humans, fishmen, minks, and dwarfs. All three of these factions make up the overwhelming force that is the Big Mom Pirates, which when you actually look at the numbers, it's legitimately intimidating. I've seen fans of the series calculate the crew's numbers to over a hundred thousand which would easily make them the biggest fighting force besides the marines. And this makes sense to me because other emperors like the beast pirates and the whitebeard pirates have nowhere near those numbers, but their individual members are vastly more powerful than the big mom pirates. Big Mom is not only the weakest Yonko, but also has the weakest commanders, so it makes sense as to why their army is so vast. Moving forward, I would talk about the fall of the Big Mom Pirates, but they're technically still going strong. Now, the crew did lose their captain to Trafalgar Law and Captain Kidd. Long story short, Big Mom went to Wano to kill Luffy, but she got jumped by these two in the process. Harrow Sparrow also got bodied, but... We do not care. So instead, I'll talk about the domain of the Big Mom Pirates, Tottoland. Tottoland is an archipelago in the New World portion of the Grand Line. The country consists of 35 islands, including the capital, Whole Cake Island. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the closest thing to Big Mom's dream. Tottoland is a nation made out of candy that includes many different races of the One Piece world. And when I say made out of candy, I truly mean it as most of the buildings are made of something edible. Each island has a different theme as well. Cacao Island is made out of chocolate, Liquor Island has a bunch of booze, and Nut Island is... You may have noticed how I called the Sweet Commanders ministers, and that's because they govern their own island. For instance, the Minister of Cheese resides on Cheese Island, and his name is Charlotte Montador. All 35 islands have their own ministers that fall under Big Mom, who has complete reign over Tottoland. As stated before, the chess peacekeepers are the police force of the country, but without direction, they're basically as useless as banana guards from Adventure Time. And before you think that this country is a complete paradise, let me inform you of a few requirements of living here. One, you have to live with an undying monster that will destroy the nation if she doesn't get snack time. Two, you have to donate one year of your life every six months to create endless homies. And three, you can't leave. There are hundreds of ships and security protocols ready to wreck you if you even try. Low key though, still better than North Korea. Anyways, on to my opinion of the Big Mom Pirates, and let me just say that this crew is my favorite Emperor crew so far. Everything from the designs, the world building, the powers that they have, it's incredible. I know, I know, we still haven't seen the red haired or blackbeard pirates yet, but come on dude. Almost every important Charlotte sibling has an amazing design and amazing powers. Y'all may not know this, but I'm really into like colorful shit. I've never really been, I never really liked any uh, dark or desaturated stuff unless it's used really well. And for the whole cake arc, it's literally just amazingly detailed and colorful designs one after another. The sweet commanders, bro, oh my god, each panel that introduced them was amazing. I know y'all think I'm gonna speak on Katakuri, but he's already been talked about to death i would just be beating a dead horse but cracker though from the first panel that you see him in you know he's a menace it's almost the same thing for big mom too i know a lot of people don't like her design but oda can make her look downright terrifying at times like that one panel where she f was fighting kid and law and wano and she actually got serious bro let him cook